Well, I was reading a story uh, as of late that the Chinese have opened up their nuclear bunkers and tunnels underneath their cities for their citizens to take uh, refuge from the heat wave. Uh, nice to have that option. They actually have protection for their people. And so they, if there was a nuclear war, they'd be on down there, start eating their noodles. Um, meanwhile, over in Finland, uh, under Helsinki, for example, they have a, a whole complex under there that can hold the entire population plus another quarter of a million for people who are visiting Helsinki today you know, with ice rinks, swimming pools, you name it, everything. Um, all the Russians have bunker bunkers. We, uh, Switzerland has more than anybody else. Um, Norway has them. But the United States, Canada, and Great Britain has nothing except for the government. The senior officials have their bunkers. The billionaires, of course, build their luxury bunkers. But the rest of us are on our own. So why is that? Well, there are various reasons. I was interviewing uh, Jay uh, Wimpy, who is the president of the uh, uh, American Civil Defense Association. He figures it's due to mutual assured destruction. If we have no protection for our population, we're showing our goodwill that we're willing to have our population held hostage to our peaceful intentions. However, the Chinese and Russians haven't paid attention to that. They're making sure their protection is pop uh, their population is protected. Other reasons uh, that have been posited is, uh, well, arrogance. It's never going to happen. Or, you know, we'll intimidate our enemies and they won't do anything about it. Uh, their nukes won't work anyways, or it's no point even trying to protect our population because at the end of the day, everybody's going to starve to death from nuclear winter, which is a fallacy, which I'll cover in a follow-on uh, follow video at some point. So, essentially, you're on your own. Uh, I think it's very pathetic advice of go to the center of your house, uh, stay indoors. Uh, well, that works great if you are far enough away that the blast won't take down your house or blow in your windows and doors and everything else like that. And that you have a, you know, deep enough basement that the fallout, uh, you know, won't uh, do you in. However, if you're too close to the blast, uh, your house will be blown away. Uh, and, uh, you know, and if the, or if the fallout's too thick because you're right in the plume, um, all you're doing is delaying the inevitable in that respect. So what are your options? Well, I've done a series of videos on that. Find a deep parkade, uh, basement of a major apartment building or office building deep down, um, a subway system, stuff like that. Uh, if you're in an urban area, uh, outside of the city, well, you, then it's okay. You can actually build the classic sheet of plywood and sandbagged uh, fallout shelter in your basement, and you'll be okay there. But essentially, you're on your own. You're going to have to find your own way of protecting. I'm going to provide as much information I can to help you with that. If you can afford a good bunker, uh, well, Atlas makes good ones. Um, you can do expedient stuff, uh, and there's various plants out there. Um, or, you know, if you get enough warning, get out of Dodge, you know, grab a plane down to, uh, New Zealand or, you know, somewhere or Argentina or whatever, somewhere in the Southern hemisphere to avoid it. So that is the situation there is no bunkers or for the ordinary people on it and no real preparation for civil defense in this country. Um, and as that, by this country, I mean, you know, Canada, United States and Great Britain and probably a few other places too that I'm not aware of, but those are the key, my key audience areas. Um, so, uh, look at the information, this channel, look at the information on the, uh, American Civil Defense Association website. I'll have a link to that. Uh, and, um, you know, you have to be prepared for your own to protect yourself.